My name is Saul Golan. The German army invaded Poland on Friday, September 1st, 1939. On the 6th day of warfare, the German Air Force dropped two bombs on my birthplace, Radom. One hitting in our yard, causing heavy damage, impacting the surrounding houses to tilt, including ours. At the time of the bombing, my father was chopping wood approximately 100 yards from the explosion. Miraculously, he survived the impact. The second bomb dropped into a neighboring housing complex, killing 32 people. I worked forced labor for a German construction company, Hoch and Tief, high and deep, in Volanov, five miles from Radom. I was able to come home to be together with my family and sleep overnight in the ghetto. On August 17, 18, 1942, the Nazi special commander surrounded the ghetto at Radom. The Jews, including my beloved mother and my youngest sister, were terrorized by brutal treatments and killings, forced to abandon their homes with other members of my family and relatives. All the panic-stricken people marched to the railroad station, herded, and packed like a flock of sheep destined for the death camp of Treblinka to be gassed and slaughtered and exterminated. The Nazis followed the order of the final solution to liquidate the remaining Jews. In July, of 1944, an order came from the SS commander of the camp to assemble the prisoners for a roll call. At first, they were looking for volunteers to dismantle machinery and equipment at the armament plant. I stepped forward with some other prisoners, but it, it wasn't enough to do the job. The SS guards started to pick people to take us back to the armament plan for work. But I didn't have any intention to work. Instead, me and a fellow by the name of Tuchman found a hiding place in a pocket of a drop ceiling and observing from the top down the SS guards with dogs running wild searching for the missing escapees. The morning after the escape, my partner and I stopped in a village near the Jewish cemetery to look for food. We were invited to a house and a woman treated us with bread. After we left the house, we were surrounded by a group of six Polish youngsters. Forcefully, wanting to take us to the German police for a reward of catching Jews. Fortunately, a passerby stopped with his bike. He said to them, hey guys, let them go. They have the same blood as you. They are human beings. The youngsters obliged and let us go. Unfortunately, I cannot say the same for the six million Jewish people who have been annihilated, tortured, and gassed in the Nazi death camp for the crime only of being Jewish. No grave with inscribed names or ages was left for those six million Jews. As a Holocaust survivor, being a witness, the message to the civilized world is to remember and not to forget never again.